What's wrong with this button? Nothing, but what if we wanted to surprise our visitors on Hover by doing something like this? Or how about something like this? Or how about this one? So that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to create today, this particular example right here, utilizing Rive. Now Rive allows you to build highly interactive and animated interactions for the web, amongst other things. Also, I will be releasing a Rive for Web course. So to get notified of that coming up in 2025, make sure to click the link in the YouTube description to get notified of when it releases. Alrighty, so to get started, I'm in Figma and typically you want to use an app like Figma to design whatever it is that you want to animate. Of course, you can create stuff from scratch within Rive itself, but um, if you're a UI UX designer, you're planning on using this for web, tip, chances are you're going to be working within Figma anyhow. And for this primary call to action demo, um, this is what I have. And I'm not using anything fancy, like there's no auto layout. It's literally just this button, some type, and five different guitar icons, which I got from the Iconify plugin. I typed in guitar, and I have all these. So I just threw them on there randomly, and now I could take this all, right-click, and choose Copy as SVG. At that point, we can now go to Rive and create a new project, 500 by 500 is fine, and we'll go to Assets and just Control-V, literally just paste the thing. So now we can see it shows up as pasted, and now we could just drag this sucker in. Now we can scale this down, um, like if we wanna go to like 80% on the width and height, everything will scale down proportionally. And we may also wanna make the artboard itself just a little bit bigger, like this. And then we wanna get the same background color. So we could take the, uh, the fill over here and just grab this color temporarily because we will make the background transparent uh, for use on the web in a bit but for now this is kind of where we want to go get that centered up and the one thing that's kind of frustrating is when you paste in unfortunately it doesn't um it'll ignore your groupings i uh, and it will also ignore like the layer names and stuff so unfortunately you kind of have to work around that by selecting and figuring out and just manually grouping stuff you know based on what it is you want to animate um, inside of here so i'm going to do that real quick and just make sure all the stuff that i need is going to be grouped up here. All right, so now we have this layer structure right here. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to switch to the animate section. And by default, it shows us this timeline and state machine. So we're gonna switch to timeline one and we're gonna change that to idle. All right, so we're gonna design exactly what this state looks like when somebody is just not hovered over at all or interacting with it. And my idea for that is to then go ahead and just take each one of these and hide them. And the way I'll do that is just kind of move this down like right here. And I will also change the opacity, which you do right here as well. So we're gonna change that to zero. All right, now we could also move this over as well. And we'll take this one and do the same thing, kind of move it over here. And we, can, of course, we could rotate these as well to kind of create even a more interesting aesthetic. Um, for now, I'll just leave it like that. We're gonna put zero there for the opacity. Um, we'll go ahead and move this up more towards the center, zero for opacity. And then finally, same thing here, move it up to the left, zero for opacity. Okay. That's all I'm gonna do for this part and this timeline right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and create another timeline. So notice when you create a secondary timeline and we don't duplicate the one that we just worked on, it will always revert back to the initial state of the design here. All right, so which is important um, because now we don't have to like take these and like move them back out again. Um, so this can become, um, our second timeline, which is going to be called initial hover. I'm gonna call it initial hover down here. So initial hover, just like that. And what this purpose here is, is just take us from this state to this state right here, all right? And that's all that we want. Now, in order for this to work property, properly, however, is you can notice we have these keyframes down here. Well, we have to create keyframes for all those other those same elements right here as well, which we do not currently have. There's no keyframes down here. So what we wanna do is take this guitar and we wanna create a keyframe for the position X, Y, 
and also we'll change this. Yeah, the opacity as well. Because those are the three things that we changed. We didn't change the scale or the rotation of any of those things, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, we could actually rotate this as well, but I'm gonna keep it like this for now for simplicity. And now we have guitar top right, same thing, X, Y, there. Make sure, by the way, you're all, you're at the very beginning of the uh, timeline. Do the same thing here, X, Y, here, and then X, Y here as well. So X, Y, and opacity, okay. So now that we have that, we have our two different states set up correctly. And then what we're gonna do is create yet another timeline. And this will just be called active hover. In this active hover, we wanna change this to loop. All right, by default, it's one shot, meaning it's just gonna play through it once. But we want this active hover state to just continually kind of move up and down those guitars. So we're going to repeat the timeline. We're going to loop it. And so now we're just going to take each one of these and create a, um, an, an animation where they kind of just go up and down. Uh, very simple stuff. Nothing to write home about. Very simple. So we'll take the top left guitar and we want to create a keyframe right there where it currently is on X, Y, and we'll do opacity as well. And then we're gonna come around to the center, around 30, and move it down. And then also come back, we can grab the first keyframe, copy it, Control C, and then paste it at the very end just to get the same state. So now if you were to play this, it's gonna go pretty fast, and it doesn't look good and smooth. So we can fix that real quickly by first changing the playback speed from one X to maybe something like point two all right and we do that it's going to be a lot slower but then finally if we take all three of these keyframes and select them and change the interper interpolation to cubic it's going to have a nice more floating feel to the animation and so now we want to repeat this process for the rest of the other guitars all right so now if i hit play We'll see, this is basically what um, yours should look like so far at this point in time. Um, now that we have our three different states, we want to switch over to our ta state machine, our tape machine, and make some adjustments here. So the first thing I'll do is we're going to take um, any state and just move it off to the side, and then our entry is going to immediately go to idle. So entry means like at what point this, this RAI file loads, it's gonna go straight to idle, right? Because that's what we want. So if we hit play, it's going to idle right here. All right, and it's one shot, it's not doing anything else. Then we want to switch over and drag over initial hover. All right, because that's kind of like the one that goes in between idle and the active hover. But before we connect these up, we're gonna create a Boolean value kind of think of it as like a property we're going to leave it you can rename it i'm just going to leave it at boolean one and then also a of two different hovers we're going to have a hover on for the listener and a hover off so let's change that to hover off all right so this is what you should look like or your situation should look like so far at this point and for hover on basically we want to take and specify a target value. So when you select these over here in the property uh, inspector section, we're going to take this, we click on the target, and then just over here we can select the button container, the white button container. All right, so that's what that one is uh, bound to. So now it says pointer enter. So it means when the pointer enters, then what do we want to do? Well, we choose select input and we choose Boolean 1 and we set it to true. That's how it kind of works. All right, so same thing with hover off. Same process, click on target, click on button container, click on hover off again, click on select input, Boolean false. And this has to be changed to pointer exit when you're hovering off of it. All right, so that's what that looks like. Okay, great. Now what we need to do is connect idle to initial hover. And when you do that, we have two things to look at, but the main one is this 
this little transition period between these two timelines. And for this first transition period, we're gonna give it a duration of 200 milliseconds. So 200 ms, that's good. But we also want to add a condition over here. So we click plus, Boolean one should be true, then it will go to initial hover, all right? So if we click play on this, you can see where it says initial hover and it just basically gets us right to this point right here. It doesn't look cool yet because we haven't finished it. So, you know, just be patient because we're gonna get there. All right, anyhow, then we're gonna take active hover, drag it over, and we're gonna create a connection there. All right, so for active hover, this one doesn't have to have any conditions we're just gonna have 100 milliseconds for this. This, we don't have to do anything with the conditions because we're always just gonna want to automatically go from initial hover and transition to this active hover and make it feel seamless. Almost like you're going from idle to active hover. But this part's important just so we can kind of, you know, get it not hidden from behind the button. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and hit play. Ah. There we go, look at that. And because it's a loop, it will just continually loop over. And it tells you that, this little icon, that little loop icon, this is a straight shot, straight shot, and this is a loop, and it'll just keep on looping indefinitely. Now, of course, when we hover off, we want that to also you know, hide as well. So to do that, we just go back to the idle state, and for this middle one, we're gonna change the duration to 200 milliseconds. And this one right here, we add a condition, Boolean one, we're gonna set to false. If it's, once it changes to false, guess what? We go from active hover back to the idle animation and watch how cool this is. Let's hit play, hover. Ah, nice, 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 nice. And it goes away. Now this isn't really that cool. I think we can change it up a little bit more as well. First thing I wanna do is go to active hover because I think I forgot to do this for most of, most of these and change all those keyframes to cubic, all right? So that might affect the animation a little bit more so. Might make it a little bit more snappy, the animation. And one thing I do wanna change, um, well, it's okay, no, we'll leave this as it is. One thing I wanna change is the button background itself. So what we'll do is switch to the design tab and just understand that the button container is just a white button background, right? And I wanna change that to be um, a dark version of this background color instead. And then also change the buy this guitar and this icon to white. And that will really help the effect a little bit more. So to do that, the first thing we do is go to animate and we're gonna go to idle. And so for idle, in order to animate any property from one to the other, the keyframes have to be specified. So what that means is we're gonna take button container specifically at the very beginning of the playhead, and we're gonna add a keyframe right there for the fill, all right? Additionally, for initial hover, this is where we wanna change that background. So all we have to do is just grab the background color make it a bit darker. Like running right around there, I think is pretty good. And that by, you know, by default, by changing it, we'll add a keyframe. Now I'm gonna copy this color code, the hex value, and we're gonna go back here and right to the beginning of the playhead and with button container selected, paste it. All right, so now if we go back to the state machine and hit the space bar to play, hover over it, there we go. Now we have to do the same thing for the icon and the text. We wanna change that to white. So I'll speed that part up because it, guess what? You could do this on your own. It is the same exact process of what we just did. All right, so now we go back to State Machine. Let's hit play. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so now let's say for instance, you're happy with this and you wanna integrate it on the web. Okay, to do that, the first thing I would do is make sure that based on your size of your button, um, that the artboard is only as big as it needs to be. 
So let's switch back to the design tab. And what's really cool about this is we could take this whole pasted group, and by the way, it's just called this BTN, and we can move it up here, like right around here so or so. And then we could take our artboard and just tidy it up like this. Okay, now we'll take the artboard and we're going to put zero for the opacity. So that way it is transparent. We could put whatever we want on the web page behind this if we wanted to. So with that, now we could do is just click export and we have this 24.9 kilobyte rive dot rive file riv and you want to open that up in your document here and then we're going to open up visual studio code now here's the code that we have created already and this is super simple this is a html css vanilla javascript implementation i don't want to be opinionated and say oh you're going to use react or Vue or whatever you can figure out this on your own but here's the basic idea the idea is is to take that rive file that was exported i changed the name of cta.riv you create the index.html file with this boilerplate code, which by the way, will be available for you in the YouTube description or wherever you're watching this. And the first thing is to specify the Rive canvas. That's what houses all Rive animations, all right? It's in a canvas element. Then we want to include the Rive JavaScript library. In this case, we're just using a CDN. It makes it super simple for demos here. And then the script here, you can see it says new Rive. We're specifying the name of our Rive file, which happens to exist right there. Um, the canvas here is just referencing the ID right here, which lets us know where the Rive canvas is. And then state machines. We specified this property with the state machine uh, label, which I just left at state machine one. And that lets it, you know, because otherwise, if you don't specify this, it, will, it might choose a, a different timeline to play instead, not the actual state machine, which is what we want because that's where all the logic resides. And then autoplay true. So I'm going to hit save, right click, open with live server, and there we go. This is the one project I created before the one that I just did, but it's very similar. Anyhow, there's like a little... Uh, darker area behind it that I added. But nonetheless, this is on a web page now, you know, and you can make this clickable by wrapping an A tag around it. Um, you could use JavaScript to also make it clickable, or you can actually make it clickable from within the Rive way as well. And so that's the very quick demo of how to create a really cool sort of button that is really gonna grab attention and especially Having the ability to do this can really help reinforce the brand identity um, very much so and set you aside as well from other designers who may not be able to do this sort of thing.